Hello and welcome to all our viewers from around the world. I'm Kristen Schwartz, licensed midwife and MC here at Gold Learning. And with me today, we have a speaker for our brand new symposium, the Gold Learning Early Years Online Symposium of 2021. And with me here is Robin Goebel. Welcome, Robin. Thank you, Kristen, for having me. It's fun to be with you this afternoon. Absolutely fun that you're here. This is a brand yeah. new symposium. So we are so excited to offer this to our viewers. And first of all, I want our viewers to know a little bit where you are in the world. We have an international audience, so it's always fun to see where our speakers are located. Yes, I'm outside Grand Rapids, Michigan in the United States. We relocated here about two years ago after living in Austin, Texas, but now we're we're here in, in the great Midwest. Oh, the great Midwest. Wonderful. Yeah. So it's getting fall time already for the, for you over there, right? It is starting. Yes, it's lovely. Oh, it's lovely. The tree's changing. Wonderful. Yeah. So um you have such a wonderful background, you know, you are a speaker and uh, you have your own podcast, you have courses and classes. And so Robin, tell us a little bit about your background, first of all, and how did you become interested in this particular topic that you will be presenting with us here today? Oh, I would love to, because I'd love everybody to be as excited about it as, as I am. <laughs> I am I've always been, you know, people ask me, like, how did you get interested in this? I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure. I just always <laughs> have been since I feel like since I was a teenager, just really curious about what behavior like really is, where it's coming from and why do some kids really, really struggle? And then what could we as the grownups do to help them. So, and as I moved through my undergraduate work and my graduate degree, and then moved into clinical practice as a therapist, just always have wanted to work with kids with the behaviors that are confusing and stressing the grownups out the most mm -hmm. and realizing, you know, when I came into the field 15 years ago, we were really at the beginning of kind of shifting our understanding of what behavior is and how do we support kids so that their behaviors ultimately, when it comes right down to it, you know, grownups want to help kids have behaviors that are stressing the grownups out less um and understanding what that really is like where behavior even coming from and it's been fun to be in the field during a time where we're getting more information about that like even what i learned mm -hmm. in graduate school mm -hmm. versus what we understand now yeah. about behavior in the brain and uh, the autonomic nervous system and how these components connection and attachment are underneath the behavior that we end up seeing that kids are displaying. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've just gotten, you know, really passionate about not only understanding that, understanding the neuroscience that's underneath behavior, but then how do I help parents, educators, like the people out mm -hmm. there on the front line, really working with kids? How do I help them understand that so that it becomes practical in a way that they can take what they understand about the science and then take what they know about that child and then support the support the child so that they can the child can feel the best that they can feel and that's typically when we get the behavior that we're looking for Absolutely. Oh, uh, Robin, I can hear it in your voice. You are so passionate about the topic. Yes. I can see that as well. And you're absolutely right. There has been so much research that becomes available just in a few years. I mean, we've come a long way from decades ago when we yeah. thought like little kids, toddlers, babies, um, they don't know, people don't remember their babyhood or toddlerhood. Right. So what happens there, you know, that can be, right. um, they, they don't notice trauma as long as they're being fed and diapered and kept alive. Right. And then, you know, the formative years come later. Now we know that trauma occurs already in the womb and, right. uh, and and so the early years are so important right yes so important and even if we just go outside even the word trauma mm -hmm. right that yeah. earliest experiences and that we have there's a lot that we can do as caregivers as adults to help our the you know our children like develop and they're like laying the foundation for their autonomic nervous system like we have there's a lot we can do again in those earliest years in the womb in the first two months of life even 
Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And and yeah. and it's also so important for um, the parents, of course, you know, they <laughs> for them to know how they can help their children, but also care providers, professionals yes. who are yes. um, helping parents, you know, and if it's lactation consultant, midwives, nurses, yes. um, you know, uh, therapists, anybody who is helping or working with families in that young age group, for them, yes. it is very beneficial to know what is really going on, right? What is yes. that behavior? What is behavior to begin with, right? Right. Right. What behaviors begin with? And what I have found is that if we spend a lot of time under understanding kids' behaviors, ultimately that helps us understand adult behavior as well. So yes, when I am a professional supporting a, a family or a caregiver, for me to, to, to have both pieces, like I help me understand like what their child's behavior really is. So then I can support the family, but sometimes working with families is really hard too. Mm -hmm. And sometimes adults have behaviors that are perplexing <laughs> to yeah. us. And so I have found this like just beautiful kind of way in to even reframing and, and coming towards adults with such a, a deeper compassionate lens about their behavior too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's wonderful to hear because yeah, the adults behavior too, they learned parenting. They were, you know, yeah. their models, uh, their yep. role models were their parents or their the yes. adults in their life. Right. So they take over yep. what they were taught or what they've yep. seen, the behavior they've witnessed. And then, yep. um, you know, how often do we have that? Even us as adults, I can relate to it that we say, <laughs> Oh, I don't want to be like my mother or I don't want to do this. Like my, you know, my aunt, so-and-so, yes. um, but still, and then we catch ourselves, my goodness, that was just exactly how I do not want to be or do not want to do this thing yes. you know and yeah. uh, this and then it's kind of oh my goodness where's this coming from so right. helping the adults there to yes. um, see what's going on with their own behavior and to kind of help them figure that out and so they can be you know better support to their children is so important yeah so important yeah Absolutely. Now let's talk a little bit about the presentation here, the, uh, the a neuroscience based paradigm shift for mm -hmm. parenting kids with dysregulated behavior. So tell us about this. I'm so curious about this paradigm shift. That sounds, that sounds exciting, new, different. Yes. So <laughs> we will talk about, we'll start by kind of reminding us what so many of us learned about what behavior is. Like we mm -hmm. learned a lot of things about yes. like what behavior is, what it's telling us about the child and their motivation. And maybe perhaps that they're trying to manipulate us or they just want to be in control. Like we've learned a lot of things overtly and covertly about what behavior really is. And the most like just recent science that's emerging from the field of relational neuroscience is helping us broaden that and mm -hmm. see what behavior really is. And in my presentation, we're going to talk about behavior as a reflection of a child's autonomic states and their affect regulation and then their brain development, which is not all inclusive. That's not like every single thing there is to know about what behavior really is. So this is just the three things that we'll be talking about in my presentation and helping us reframe and look at, you know, if we're thinking about a child's autonomic nervous system and their autonomic state, what is their behavior telling us about that or their affect regulation, or just simply where they are in their brain development that could be totally developmentally appropriate. Right. And then when we have kind of a new understanding about what behavior really is, well, first of all, we get some better ideas about how to help, right? Because uh -huh. behavior is usually communicating to us that the child needs help in some way, shape or form. And so the, the kind of behavior that prompts us to go to continuing education learning experiences <laughs> right. is, is behavior that is signaling like I need help in some way, right? From the child. And so if we can understand like where that behavior is really emerging from, we get way better ideas about how to actually help them. It helps us stay so much more regulated. And then right. what I think is most impactful is that when we truly understand what behavior really is, it changes how we are seeing that child. It changes how we're showing up in relationship with them. It changes, it literally changes like what the children see like reflected back to them in our eyes and in our face. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately I think is the most impactful thing that comes out of understanding 
what behavior really is. So yes, in this kind of hour long symposium presentation, we'll, we'll be going through all of those pieces. Oh, wonderful. I can't wait for that. And it sounds really like we're getting actual tools that we can utilize yes. in our practice, either with the parents, yep. with uh, children, we see ourselves perfect, wonderful. Yes. Oh, that sounds absolutely fantastic, Robin. Before I let you go, what little nugget of wisdom would you like to leave our viewers with? What little nugget of wisdom? Ooh, uh, what, you know, what's what I've been really pondering on here lately is that as a professional community, it is time for us to help parents remember how important they are to their kids. That my job as a professional is to come in and support a parent and remind them that they know their child best, that I have some helpful information that could support them because that's my job. But when it comes right down to it, they are by far the most important person in their child's life. And I think as professionals, mm -hmm. leaning back into really empowering parents yeah. to embody that truth feels like one of the most important things that we can be we can be doing right now yeah the parents are the experts really yes yeah, yes absolutely oh wonderful robin and thank you so much for that and i know it's a lot to pack into one hour but you have some also some amazing uh, free resources on your website and you have a blog so tell us tell our viewers yeah. where they can find you Oh, I'd love to. I have so much free stuff over on my website for to make it just as accessible as possible. I have a podcast and a blog and they correspond to one another so people can learn auditorily or they can, you know, read depending on what works for them. I have uh, free videos. I have a free ebook on attachments. Um, and then I have opportunities for even deeper learning with a parent course and with a membership community for parents of kids with big struggling behaviors. So, so much. I work so hard to just have so much available to the people who need it. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Robin, for your time here with me chatting about all the amazing, uh, you know, resources that you have and uh, your work and, of course, the presentation here at Gold. Thank you so much. Yes. Thanks for having me. And thanks for what y'all are doing to just get this information to as many people around the world as possible. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And for our viewers, the presentation, a neuroscience-based paradigm shift for parenting kids with dysregulated behaviors is part of our online early years online symposium of 2021. And this will be a live symposium, will be live on October 4th and 5th. This presentation will be live on October 4th. Um, all the presentations in the symposium will be recorded. They are live, but also recorded. So if you cannot attend the full symposium live, there will be the recording available for you. And if you find out, would like to find out more about this presentation here with Robin Goble and all the other presentations in the symposium, we invite you to go visit goldlearning.com. Thank you everyone for watching and hope to see you at the symposium. Bye-bye.